Animals have always been a passion of mine, but animal nutrition wasn't something I realized I was also passionate about until I went through a few key events and experiences. I often get asked by curious pet owners how I got to the point I'm at with raw feeding and why I've made it such a major part of my life. So in this video, I'll be hopping into my past and taking you through my little journey. This journey began in 2014 when we moved with our two ferrets to upstate New York for school. While going to school, I got a job at a doggy daycare and pet boarding facility. Physically, it was one of the hardest jobs I've ever done, but it was also my most memorable and rewarding job. It was this job where I first learned about feeding raw. While working, my favorite part of the day was feeding all of the animals that were boarding. Making all of their meals certainly took a while on some days, depending on our volume, but I seriously loved plating their food. I enjoyed seeing the different kinds of kibble, wet food, and home-cooked meals brought in by their owners, and I also loved topping their bowls with their treats or adding warm water to make it more enjoyable for them. I also began to learn what brands of kibble were considered low quality versus high quality. I started looking at the ingredients labels and seeing if I could tell which brands were better than others. And I also started spending a lot more time on pet food review sites. This job got me more conscious about the ingredients in pet food. And even though I didn't have a dog or cat at the time, I had my ferrets and I wanted to give them the best food possible. One day, a frequent border client came in with her old Labrador who had three legs. And I noticed my coworkers were slightly annoyed when he came in, and at the time, I didn't understand why. I learned that his owner was actually a holistic vet, and his feeding directions were extensive. He was fed a raw grind with about 20 different holistic supplements that had to be added in and in very specific amounts. Many of my coworkers hated handling the raw food and also hated how long it took to make it. But to me, this was fascinating. I never saw a raw meat-based diet before. And from then on, I started looking more into the raw diet and I learned that it was actually the most optimal diet for ferrets too. This made me really excited and determined to understand it more for their sake. Unfortunately, during this time, my four-year-old ferret, Firo, started to decline in health. He first needed his spleen removed, which isn't too uncommon with pet store ferrets, unfortunately. And after that, he was back to his normal self for a few months, but at the end of the year, I noticed a lump in his abdomen, and it was big. We found out that it was a cancerous tumor, and at the young age of four, I lost him. Firo was my heart ferret, and I couldn't help but blame myself. If I maybe raised him on a more species appropriate diet, like the raw diet, maybe he would have been healthier. However, being a martial ferret, he had too much stacked against him when it came to health and genetics. Even though I lost Firo, I still had Oliver, and maybe I could make a difference in his life, even if he too was a martial ferret. Ferrets do a lot better with companions, and Oliver needed a friend. I was determined to not only raise my next ferret on raw, but get him from a reputable breeder rather than a pet store. After searching, I finally found the perfect breeder for me, and she even raised her kits on raw as well. During the months waiting for my kit to be born, I researched day and night on the raw diet for ferrets, from forums to websites to everything in between, which unfortunately wasn't many places at the time. Once I got guts in 2016, I started his meal plan right away with whole prey in the mornings and franken prey or PMR as we know it now in the evenings. I wanted to extend my knowledge further regarding cat and dog raw diets as well, even though I didn't even have any at the time. I spent the next two years diving into books, blogs, websites, and social media accounts that helped me learn more about the raw diet for other species. During this time, I also had two hedgehogs, Quilson and Seely, who I also fed species-appropriate diets to. For hedgehogs, this mainly consists of insects, but they also ate raw grinds at times with some steamed veggies here and there as well. In 2018, we finally got our first dog, Matsu. Even though I had never done a meal plan at this scale, I was determined to perfect it months before he came home. And I prepped out his first week's worth of food the second I scheduled his pickup. From the moment he came home, my raw feeding journey skyrocketed. He gave me confidence to not just teach myself, but others as well. I made him an Instagram account and posted frequently about his diet. 
During this time, I was also working at a veterinary hospital and learned the opposing perspectives of the raw diet, as well as the medical side of the pet world, which really aided in my raw feeding and formulating journey even further. In 2019, after we moved to Virginia, we got our first kitty, Tangy, who was a special needs rescue that the animal hospital I worked at took in. Just like Matsu and Guts, the moment Tangy came home, he started eating a homemade raw diet. It was definitely an amazing feeling to feed four different species confidently. In 2020, I decided to put my confidence to the real test and not just casually post on Matsu's account anymore, but create a new account solely on educating about species appropriate raw diets for dogs, cats, ferrets, and hedgehogs on not just Instagram, but YouTube as well. I feel like I've grown and learned so much more since then, yet I still feel like there's so much more to learn. I certainly look forward to seeing where I am a year from now as I strive to make raw feeding more accessible to pet owners around the world. Watch this video to see what I've learned in these past five years. Maybe it can help you.